various beliefs as believers in a higher source, but to stand as an interfaith body, these men and women that represent a variety of households and faiths across this city, to talk about one important message, and that is the message of love. Come on, let's, let's, let's. And in the message of love, as I shared earlier today in our round table, I read this morning the golden rule of all faiths. And the golden rule of all faiths and the golden rule of life is to respect the religious beliefs of others. And the precursor to love is respect. If there is no respect for one another, there is no love. And so we as interfaith leaders today are standing boldly on the message of love. And with the message of love, we are sending as faith leaders a unified voice, a unified message to the chairman and chief executive officer of the Disney Corporation that we as faith leaders will not stand for television programming that condones and promulgates religious hate. We renounce it and we denounce it this day. We are witnessing all over the globe as recent as Sunday in the Philippines, a church bombing on a Catholic house of worship. This morning we memorialized the life of a young man who served as a member and a worker of the Church of Scientology in Sydney Australia. We have heard of several other accounts that date back as early as 1968 when four young girls were killed as the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama was bombed by white supremacists. We will no longer stand for hate in this country. This message, dear hearts, goes beyond religious hatred. But even this morning in our news, we read that actor Jussie Smollett was beaten, ribs broken, bleach poured on him, a rope placed around his neck, and two individuals shouted with loud voices to him, this is MAGA, make America great again. We will not stand as a coalition for religious hate, but we will not also stand for xenophobia, and we will not stand for homophobia. Tell somebody next to you, I love you. 
Some of y'all said it real lazy. Come on, tell somebody else, I really do love you. And we are honored, we are honored, we are standing today with our sisters and brothers from Scientology. We are standing today with our sisters and brothers from Islam. We are standing today with our sisters and brothers from Christianity. We are standing today with our sisters and brothers from Judaism who are here, unified, to speak the message of love. So we're going to give them an opportunity to come and share in their own way as we are standing as one voice committing to coalescing our efforts across this world to put an end to religious hate and to hold not only television programming but social media accountable. Let's thank God today for Rabbi Jacobs as he comes to share in his own way and then we'll hear from Muhammad and so forth. Let's give him a big hand. thinking of a biblical setting in the book of Genesis, which you're probably familiar with, when Balaam, Balaam, the ancient prophet, was sent to curse the Israelites. And he was on his donkey and he came upon the Israelites and was about to curse them. And he saw how they set up their camp and how they behaved to one another. And instead of cursing him, Bilam said, Matoku Ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkanotecha Yisrael. How good are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. There are those who are opposed to the clergy here until they see how we act and how we stand up for justice. How good are your tents, O Jacob, our dwellings, O Israel. Let us protest. Let us move forward. Let us get hatred off the TVs and let our children be encouraged by the interfaith leadership of this country, of this community, of this city. God bless the work of our hands and the blessings that we share today. Bless you. Let me share a story. Uh, during the Balkan crisis, I helped resettle 30 Albanian refugee families here in Los Angeles with the uh, Jewish Family Services. So we partnered with the community, the Jewish community, and we resettled these refugees. And there was one young kid about 11 years, 12 years old, who from the moment we met him at the airport, weeks, had a stone cold face. The shock was still within him. Until we arranged a trip to Disneyland. And when he saw the world in Disneyland, is the first smile I saw. That's the power of Disney. So it really hurts my heart to tell Disney and its leadership, what are you doing? What are you doing when your programming is leading to hate, to violence, and to death? That's not the Disney I know. What second thing that really uh, hurts me and alarms me, and correct me if I'm wrong. I asked the organizers of uh, the Church of Scientology, I said, have uh, you talked to Disney? Have you talked to... Uh... They said, there's no response. This is America. 
when we see something and we're disheartened as a community, at least the other side should come to the table. How are you going to do programming for television and then from my point of view, it becomes Talai's vision because now you have stereotyped a community, a faith community, a self-help community who has changed lives of many people in a very positive way and you put brush strokes and stereotype the community negatively. How can you not come to the table and talk? So as faith leaders, we don't get angry. We don't get upset because we know God is the best of planets. And Dr. King, Muhammad Ali, and all those icons who built the liberties that we enjoy, we just ask the executives, people responsible for this programming, we're not angry. As faith leaders, our job is to wake up moral consciousness. That's our job. That's what we do. That God is watching. And at least, okay, some people don't believe in the God, believe in human beings. Believe in wishing goodness for others that you wish for yourself. And I challenge the producer. If someone in your family was murdered through your production, you'd be standing right here. And if I made the production, you definitely want to come to talk to me. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to tell the executives and the producers, how can you ignore the pain of the community? Thank you very much. necessity to acquire volunteers that would bring comfort to those who were trying to rescue, to, re to restore the site to the degree possible. It was a massive undertaking. And never once in the weeks following that did I hear in the city of New York a negative word about anyone or any group. Three and a half weeks later, I had to attend a meeting at my alma mater in Ohio when I drove across Pennsylvania. And I have to say that that was my first exposure to what I've come to know as hate radio. I could not believe the venom as you drive along and switch station times. And I could not believe the venom that I was hearing directed by people who had nothing whatever to experience in the destruction or even the deaths that occurred in New York and how different their take was because they were politically intent on demonizing people. People are demonized primarily through the stereotypes that grow and can be planted in 
others basically have no experience with the group being demonized. Either because the group itself is small or it's in some other place predominantly. But when you know somebody who is Muslim or Jewish or black or Roman Catholic, it's kind of hard to believe the negative stereotypes about them because they don't fit with the people who you know personally. But if you know not anyone from those groups, it's very easy for these negative stereotypes to be implanted. Switch forward a little bit. The opportunity that we have as religious leaders, truly, is to come together and make this statement plain. We must do it. We are doing it. And we must continue to do it. And probably one of the things that we should ask of Disney is in his 75th year, what would Mickey think about this? It's kind of hard to imagine that this hatred that spews from the result of their corporate endeavors would be consonant with anything of the moral fabric today. A number of years ago, as throughout the country, there were lots of controversies over capital punishment. And I remember one local newspaper in Queens editorializing rather vigorously and complaining. I wish I could clip that and save that editorial. But the operative sentence was, why are all these clergy raising these moral issues? And of course, the answer that I would give is, because you are not. First, thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Thank you all. I'm going to read you something that I find quite profound. And I'm not going to tell you who wrote it until the end. But it says, I believe firmly in the efficacy of religion, in its powerful influence on a person's whole life. It helps immeasurably to meet the storms and stress of life and keep you attuned to the divine inspiration. Without inspiration, we would perish. Walt Disney. I believe that the Disney, the Walt Disney Company should return to its roots and the belief in the beauty and all the creativity that the maestro imbued into it, Walt Disney. That's what I have to say. Miss Elaine Gibbs is coming again. Won't you give her a hand, please? It's a world of laughter, a world. It's a world of hope and a world of fear. There's so much that we Yeah. Hey. 
Some of the words that have been used to describe Shane. Shane was born and raised in San, San Diego. His preaching ministry began at the solemn age of 16 years old when he began to give some of his first sermons in the church. Every Sunday after church, Harris would give a service, a Sunday service in his bedroom and would preach to Teddy Bears as practice. Now he will be speaking in front of you. I introduce him. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. 